So first things first, frame up your shot, which I think I'm pretty happy with right now. And then add the light in. And this is what it looks like after. So I tried to spruce up the background a little bit, make it a bit more colorful. The past few months have actually been really busy in terms of camera releases. We've had the R5 and R6, and we've also had the A7S III, and both of which I've made videos for. I'll put them in the description below and in the cards above. So feel free to check them out. Give me a little subscribe if you're feeling good. Now, as much as these cameras have really good video specs, they might well be used for filmmaking and video production. But what if you're looking for a camera that was specifically designed for video? It didn't overheat and had a way better form factor and it had an RF mount. Kind of like the R5, but better for video. <laughs> this is where the new Canon RF Cine line of cameras comes into play. It's all just rumors right now, so take it with a pinch of salt. I'm sure things will change, but I thought it'd be cool to share with you guys anyway, just to see what you guys think of it. And if you think it's gonna be any good, we've got the R200 and the R300. The best way I can put it is if the R5 and R6 had a baby with the C300 and the C200, and out came the R200 and R300. So let's start by talking about the similarities. Both of them have an RF mount, obviously. They don't have IBIS, which I don't think is a big deal. Internal NDs up to 10 stops, which Sounds great. Both of them have C-Log 2 and 3. And the reason I mentioned them being baby brothers to the C300 and C200 was because they both use the same Super 35 4K sensor of the C200 and C300 Mark III. Clearly, this is gonna be targeted as a great B cam for those bigger brothers. And the fact that it has the same sensor means that color grading and matching clips in post is gonna be a breeze because they're literally gonna look identical. Now let's talk about the differences. The R300 shoots 4K 120 FPS and 2K at 180 FPS, all 10-bit 422. And it's rumored to do all of this on an SD card, which I'm like, whoa, the R5 couldn't do that and they needed to put a CF Express Type B. I imagine they're gonna do something similar with this. And comparing this to the R200, it does 4K at 60 frames per second and 1080p at 120 frames per second. And these are okay specs, like they're kind of like the R6. What's annoying is the fact that it does all of this at 4208 bit, which is really annoying Canon, especially in 2020. The only valid reason I can think of is because it is a entry level to the RF Cine line and they had to cut corners, but it's just a shame they had to cut corners on the video. Like, ah oh man, R200 simply just doesn't do raw internally or externally. Whereas the R300 states that it doesn't do any internal raw at launch, which is good news because it means in a future firmware update, this feature is gonna get unlocked. I'm only speculating here, but if it could do external ProRes raw to like the Ninja V, oh, that would be sick. In terms of running these cameras, the R300 takes the Canon BPA style battery, which kind of looks like the Sony MPF battery, like this kind of brick, but it does last a very long time, which means you won't have to worry about replacing it during shoots as often. For the R200, it's gonna be powered by dual Canon LPE6 NH batteries, which are just the newer versions of LPE6, but they're pretty much the same thing, but with better battery efficiency. With there being two of them, I hope there's some sort of hot swappability because that would be a really cool feature. The R200 comes in at 3,499 US dollars, whereas the R300 comes in at a much higher 6,299 US dollars. That pretty much rounds up the main specs of these new RF Cine cameras. There are also other rumors out there that say there will be a full-size HDMI output, a possible SDI, twin mini XLR inputs, as well as different types of card slots like two SD UHS-2, as well as the CF Express Type B. These would be nice to see, but again, these aren't confirmed and we don't know which cameras these will be applicable to. That's all we know so far, but I wanna know if you guys, what do you think of this camera? Is it something that you're gonna cop? Is it not? Why? What features do you wanna see in this camera? Comment them all down below. Let's have a discussion down in the comments after this video. I would love to know your thoughts. I personally think that these cameras definitely have a lot of potential. Obviously with the same sensors as their bigger brothers, it's definitely a great B cam. It's definitely a great videographer's camera because it has mini XLRs or potentially and the internal NDs. So the form factor makes it really great for video too. It all depends on what the final spec list is. And hopefully if it does improve, then it's actually looking like a serious machine. Machine. The only thing I'd really question is the price because these cameras are actually really expensive for what they are and looking at the market There are a lot of budget cine cameras like the Z cam, Kinfinity, Pocket 4k, 6k, Ursa, the Red Komodo Some of these cameras outperform the R200 and R300 in some areas and actually come in at a much lower price point So it's gonna be interesting to see what Canon really come out with and how they really fit into the market That's pretty much all I've got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it I hope it was interesting to watch. Let me know what filmmaking topic or game Gear I should talk about next. Thank you so much for watching. For people that are invested in the Canon ecosystem that have RF glass, may already have the R6, you definitely want to pay close attention to this camera because 
I feel like it might be your next purchase. <laughs>